welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nicole and I am a wife and mum of two children and I work in finance for my day job. So I thought today I would share with you like my budgeting technique and how I can make a pound go a really long way. Because I work in finance, I'm really good at making my pound go a long way for me. So I live quite a frugal lifestyle. I'm very good at saving and paying off Dad, I thought I would share with you some tips and tricks on how you can make your money go a bit further for you like I have for myself. So if you'd like to see what I do, please keep on watching. Statements. The amount of people that I see on a day-to-day -day basis that do not understand anything on their bank statement is really quite scary and if you don't understand your bank statement you really need to go and have a look because I see so many people paying for things they don't know what they're paying for, they have fraud going out of their account and they don't realise because they don't know like the ins and outs of the bank account on the bank statement so what I want you to go and do, do this straight away, don't wait till Monday, go and do it now, log on to your online banking, pop into your local bank, go and get three months bank statements because I think you need three months to sort of work out an Average of like your income and your expenditure so what you're gonna do on your statements you're gonna break it down first of all into two categories so you've got your income and your outgoings so basically your income so if you're like me and you earn a set monthly wage each month that's gonna be pretty easy to understand the money you've got coming in it's the same amount each month that's that done so if you get paid different amounts you might get paid weekly or you might get paid like this amount this month this amount that month so for example you get paid a thousand pound one month fifteen hundred the next month if you get three months worth you can sort of average that out to work out an average you basically you add your three months up divide it by three and it'll give you an average for the three months of what amount you're working with for your monthly payment that's your income side done you've worked that out and what I want you to do is go through every single statement for the last three months and I want you to divide it into a further three categories for your outgoing. The first category is bills. So your bills will be things that you have to pay every month to live. So your mortgage, your gas and electric, your water bill. These things, you normally would probably pay them on a direct debit or on a standing order. And please, please, please make sure you understand what a direct debit and a standing order are. Like, if you want me to explain it further, get in touch, I'll happily go through that with you. But the amount of people that do not understand the difference is quite surprising so they add they are a similar thing but they are very different as well bills usually are paid on either a standing order or a direct debit and sometimes you still get people that will pay them with their actual bill but just make sure you log this this is what you're paying your monthly bills so those are your mandatory outgoings your other two categories is groceries so groceries are anything that is consumable so for example you've got obviously your food and you drink the you're going to buy each week to feed your family but then you have things like shampoo fuel for your car um things like that so i would class that under my groceries anything that i can use that gets used up is going on my groceries list and then you have another category which is your third expenses which i would just say is inappropriate spending is what i call it is what my husband calls it anyway so it's my inappropriate spending or your miscellaneous your other your extra spending so basically what you spend the rest of your money on so your cost of coffee your your mcdonald's dinner you decided you wanted to go and buy one day your extra spending that you spent that you didn't really need to spend but you spent it anyway and write that down and you will be surprised at how much went into that one those are going to be your three lists of outgoings on your statement i want you to thoroughly understand what is going in and out of your statement so get statement savvy so once you've done all of that you know what you've got coming in you've got you know what you've got going out so now that you've divided up your three expenses into the different categories we're going to first look at bills so your bills are mandatory you have to pay them you're thinking well i'm set paying that amount because that's my bill and that's what i've got to pay no you don't no you do not have to pay that if you go on comparison websites you can find comparisons for anything really out there so you're paying british gas 130 pound a month but if you switch to edf you're going to be paying 80 pound a month why are you paying 50 pound more for the same thing you're paying an extra 50 pound a month for gas and electric that's 600 pound over the year that's a pair of Louboutins. that 
is money towards a holiday or that is just money to pay off your loan that you have sitting there that's costing you a lot of money. Don't pay extra money for something that you can get from somewhere else that costs you a lot, lot less. So go on websites like um, loveenergy.com, um, there's all these smart kind of saving websites, you can get your gas and electric cheaper, um, you can compare, understand your gas and electric bills. So you get charged, um, like you might think, oh it's only 6p a unit for my electricity or whatever. Now I'm going to be 100% honest, I'm not very good at this, my husband sorts that out. We have his and hers responsibilities, you know like he takes the bins out, he sorts the gas and electric out, he understands how all the gas and electric bill work because he works for an energy company. He sort of explained it to me a little bit in one ear, out the other. You have a unit price, so you're going to be paying, say for example, 10p per unit. That's just an example, that's not a thing. But then you've come out of your fixed term and it's gone up to 15, pa 15 pence a unit or 20 pence a unit for the same thing that you could then go and reset. You could re-sign with the same company in a fixed term, but they'll charge you back to 10p instead of 20p. So it's saving you like half the price. And you think, oh, well, 10p is not a lot of money. But when you think you're using thousands of units each month, it's going to rack up and rack up to hundreds of pounds. And you don't want to be paying that on gas and electric. I mean, I know it's stuff you need to live off, but do not come out of your fixed term on a gas and electric because you are going to be spending a fortune and it's usually about 30 days from the end of your fixed term is when you need to start switching 30 days before. Write it on your calendar, get it in there so you're not paying more for something that you don't need to pay more for. So I wrote down all my bills. They're all my bills every month. So mortgage, gas and electric, TV license, Sky, home insurance, um, the dog's insurance, phones, nursery, dancing, council tax, Netflix, Prime. These are all things that come out on a regular basis that I pay for personally. So what I would look at, right, my mortgage. Do you understand about your mortgage? If not, go online, read about it, speak to a mortgage advisor, speak to your mortgage advisor. They will explain it to you how it works and see if you are on the best one. You can always, just because it's such a big, a mortgage is such a big loan that you think you're stuck with one provider and it may be that you've signed a five year fixed and you are stuck, but go and have a shop around. If you're not in your fixed, go and have a look to see. Make sure you're on the best deal for you because your mortgage is probably your highest expenditure. Sky, do you need Sky? Do you need to have Sky? I mean, to be fair, we don't really need to have Sky, but we have it because we can afford to have that. But what I do like to do is ring them up and tell them I'm gonna leave, and then they'll give me a bit of discount. So that's always the way when they rack the bill up to like 110 pound and you're like, whoa, hang on, you're charging me 110 pound to watch telly, like what? Um, so I'll ring them up and I'm saying, look, I'm gonna leave you and I'm gonna go to Virgin, and then they'll give me like 20 pound a month off or something, so try that one. Home insurance, again, compare, comparisons, compare the Meerkat market, whatever it's called, go compare. You can get good home insurance quotes, just make sure they cover enough for the cover that you need. It might be like £10 at that one and £50 at that one, but that one covers you for everything and that one doesn't. So just make sure you read the small prints. The dog's insurance, if you've not got dogs, you don't have to worry about that. But if you're thinking about getting a dog, just bear in mind, they have insurances and vet bills and stuff like that that you need to pay. So you need to take that into consideration. And again, you can do comparisons with them. So yeah, I'm not going to go through all the bills, but just make sure you compare them. But there is one bill I'm going to get into there and it's Netflix. Netflix is not necessary. I don't need Netflix. I mean, I do because I needed to watch 13 Reasons Why season two. But do I need it this month? Because I'm not watching anything this month. If you feel like I really want to watch all these shows on Netflix and it's only £7.99, then fair enough. But then you think I'm not watching anything next month, cancel it. Cancel it for a month and then three months down the line some more TV shows come out and just binge watch them. We like to do it as like a date night thing and binge watch some TV shows and we normally sort of do it on a quiet month so we know that, well this month we've got nothing going on, let's binge watch some series and then next month we'll cancel it, save ourselves some money. It's only 7 99 a month but if you're not watching it, why pay for it? So cancel your Netflix if you're not using it. It's not a necessity. I know a lot of people, they'll get paid at the end of the month and they're like, and three days later they're like, oh, 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 got no money, I can't go anywhere. Not with this system, you need to budget and you need to stick to your budget and this way you know what money you have each week 
not for the whole month but for each week and then what I like to do, I mean, I've done this pretty much my whole life, well, since my working life, um, but I've just gone on another channel, she's called Jordan Page, and I really love her channel, she's like the budgeting queen, and she does the exact same thing that I do, and I was like, yes, I'm a budgeting queen too. This is what I have always done, and basically, so you get paid monthly, right? You split that up into weeks, so we're calling it four weeks, and if you have five week month one month maybe give yourself a little bit more of an allowance or maybe just split your overall into five weeks rather than four weeks so you just have to live a little bit tighter each week so you've sorted your bills out right we've we've gone on our compare we've saved ourselves a bunch of money and that money now we're putting in savings we're putting it to pay our debts off right that's that's done we're paying for that holiday that we want to go on because we saved 50 pound a month with switching from whoever with this gas company I'm, I'm sorting you out here, right, <laughs> I'm in a really funny mood, sorry. So anyway, we're going to budget, we're going to budget really well. This is going to be purely for easy mathematics for the sake of this video, but what I'm going to say to you is that for each person in your house, you should budget on groceries, so you've got your bills and you've got your groceries and you've got your other spending, your, your extra spending. So for your groceries, what I'm going to say is I'm going to give you a budget of £100 per person per month for groceries, okay? This is going to make it really easy for mathematics because I'm a family of four, that's £400 split between four weeks, that's £100 a week for my budget for groceries. So that means like my shampoo and all that sort of stuff, my food, my drink, that is for my week. So we're going to do it here. So we've got each week, so we've got groceries and other so let's split this up my drawing is atrocious so you got one two three four so you've got 100 pound a week for your groceries i'm not going to keep writing that everywhere but you get the gist yeah that is your budget so you cannot spend more than that on your groceries you've got to stick to it you've got to be you've got to be strict so on your other spend, you know, you want to have a life, you want to treat yourself. I would say, again, for easy mathematics for this, I'm going to just give you another £100. Not saying that that's necessarily, like, what you're going to do. Each week, you've got week one, two, three, four of the month. You've got £200 to play with there. You go shopping that week, you only spend £80, so you've got an extra £20 left over. Put it in your savings account, put it in your, your debt or whatever. But one week you're having a party or you're stocking up on your meat at the market like I do or whatever. So you've spent £150. Uh-oh. Like, where's your £50 come from? You're going to take it off there. So your extra spending, you're going to be a little bit more tight with. So you're not going to be going out all the time. You're going to have to limit those costas, you know cost a freaking fortune as my husband says you're still within your limit there really so you pretty much have 200 quid to bat and forth between them so it might be one week you've spent your whole 200 pound on food because you stocked up on a lot of stuff but then the next week you only spend 20 pound so you can get your hair done the salon so it's the same thing so i just borrow between them but then I know that once I spent my money, so call it Monday, once I've come to Sunday and I'm thinking, oh crap, I'm really skint, when it comes to Monday again, I've got my whole new, my whole new limit again. But what I don't do is think, oh, well, I'll just borrow, like, we've got this this month, week, so I'll take £50 from next week's money. I don't do that. And you see, when I watch Jordan Page, she does it with an envelope. I kind of just keep tabs. Um, I sort of just know where I'm at now. But if you're just starting out, you might want to write this down, put notes on your phone. Or her system, I think, is really, really good. It's like an envelope system. So she writes this on an envelope. So when you spend your £100, so say you've gone and spent £50, you minus it off, write down what you've got left. So you know you've got £50 left in your groceries. So you know where you're at all the time. So she does this where she keeps the wallet in her purse and she puts all the receipts inside the wallet. So if you need it for tax purposes, you've got all your receipts there and you're not going to be, like if you get audited or whatever, you're not going to be scrimping for your receipts. But then you know where you're at. So every time you spend money, you're like, I know what I've got left. This method of budgeting, I find really works. So if... It also gets me in the frame of mind that if someone says, do you want to go and do this? And I'm like, well, actually, no, I've got zero left. No, I can't come. Even though I know I've got £200 this week, 
well that's my next week so I make sure that I say no to things when I know I don't have the money or what I'll do is like on the other weeks I will try and save as much money as I can and put that in my extra pot there because I know I've got that event coming up then that way I don't have to say no to as many things because I've I've saved there, I've saved there, I've saved there, I've got the money for that, that's there, that's put to one side, that's my extra spending money. So that is how I budget each week, each month, so I know that each week I've got a new amount of money coming each week for my spending pleasures at the supermarket when I go to Asda or whatever at Aldi. I hope that makes like a lot of sense, but if it doesn't, go and have a look at Jordan Page's envelope technique, I will link it below. It's like I said, it's exactly what I've always done, but she explains it in such a good way that I think any beginner could really go for it. And she is like a budgeting boss. So yeah, definitely watch that. So you've sorted out your bills, you've sorted out your grocery spending, right? Were you thinking, well, I spend a lot. Like, how am I going to keep to £100 a person? That's a little, that's not enough. It is more than enough. And if you're spending all that much money, much more money each week, then you are shopping at the wrong places. Now, it, that's fine if you don't care and you want to go and spend, then that's fine. But for me personally, I would rather go and shop at Aldi and spend £40 on my weekly shopping than go to Asda and spend £90 for the same thing. And to be honest, if you've not been to Aldi, where have you been? What is wrong with you? Get yourself to Aldi. I find I spend a lot less because one, they don't have a clothing section that you spend stuff on that you don't need. They don't have like all that extra big section that you're gonna go and spend extra money in. So that is one thing that I save money on. But then also the food is a lot cheaper, but I find that it's a better quality stuff and you get more for your money. You get more in the packages and it pe depends what it is that you're getting obviously. But for the stuff that I buy, I find that Aldi provides me with more for less money. So I am getting a lot more for my pound, which is what I want, right? Why do I want to spend 20 pound there and 50 pound there? for the same thing. What's that £30? What am I spending that extra £30 for? Bank that £30, spend your money at Aldi, you've got an extra £30 to play with. You can go on that night out that you were thinking you couldn't go on because you've done your shop somewhere else. I'm just gonna say, that's what you've gotta do. You've gotta shop smart. That that also goes the same for places like Poundland, Poundworld. I mean, I think Poundworld's shutting down, but Poundland, I love Poundland. Things that you can get, like, you can't get everything in Aldi, so I do love Aldi, but sometimes it is a bit of a disappointment because you do have to buy certain branded things for certain things. So they only get sold in like Asda and Tesco, etc. They're the only shops that are near me, Asda and Tesco, so those are my alternatives. But some of the things that I want that are from Asda and Tesco, they sell in Poundland for a pound, which they cost like three quid in Asda and Tesco, so I'll go there. So it's just about shopping smarter, looking around, having to think about like where it is that you're buying your things from. Another thing is for like days out, you're gonna go to Chester Zoo with the kids, see if they've got them offers on where you can get a two for one ticket or go online and look on voucher codes or voucher or living social, Groupon. They all have things for like nights away or nights. So you can do like nice things. You can go on date night with your husband for £10 for a meal, a free course meal, including wine on steaks for £10 because you've got it on Groupon. So it's just looking at those alternative things that you can do that can save you money, but you can still have a really nice time. You've gone out, you've had that nice free course meal with your hubby, you've had um, a bottle of wine, you're both feeling a bit tiddly and you're happy because the privilege of all that just costs you £10 and a taxi and maybe a babysitter. But if you go out and you just think, right, we'll go out for a night out, well, it's 40 quid for that, it's 50 quid for that, do you know? So it's just those sort of things. It takes a bit of planning, it takes a bit of preparation, but those things are what sort of saves you money essentially and you're not wasting your money it's all about waste and it's all about waste management and I don't know why I'm talking with my hands I feel like a traffic air uh, traffic controller <laughs> that is basically down to a T and one other thing is when you are shopping and you want to shop smart is do a meal plan and stick to your shopping list oh my god if I don't do a shopping list I'll buy this 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 everything's going in. Let's get some croissants. We don't even eat croissants, but we're buying them. Why? It's five for the price of four. Well, I don't need five. They're going to go off in two days. Why am I doing this? Why are you drawing me in with these offers? Ignore the offers, cover your eyes, avert, just go in, buy what's on your list, what you need, what you're going to use, and that's it. 
don't be pulled into the offers unless it is something that you use a lot of and you know like like we go for quite a bit of cheese who doesn't who doesn't love cheese so sometimes like you get your cathedral city it'll be on offer like two for one so i'll buy it then because i know i'm going to use it but other things that I'm, I'm like i always have to question do i use this do i need this do i want this just don't buy the offers just stick to your list do a meal plan do your menu for the week so you know exactly what meals you'll be eating, what you need to shop for, you've got it all in. You don't need to keep popping out to Tesco because that's £10 that day and that's £10 another day. And you're sticking to your budget, you've got your shopping list, you know what you're doing, you're not spending extra money. Done. A really good way to organise your money, I would say, is to have multiple bank accounts. This really organises me in paying my bills and my spending so I know where my, all my money's at because I find if I don't know where my money's at I'll overspend something will go wrong somewhere something won't get paid for and then I'm like ah so I have like multiple bank accounts if you saw my bank accounts you'd be like Nicole seriously do you need that many bank accounts but I do personally I do need a lot the free if you go and open like a regular savings account at your bank they should be free I'm pretty sure that all the banks in the UK are free so for example I would say you need to have an account that is solely for paying your bills and try and set all your bills to come up out on the same day. What me and Kieran do is we get paid similar time, so we'll both transfer in some money into our bills account. That way, we know that the bills are covered, nothing's coming out that shouldn't be coming out, and if anything extra comes out of that account, something's gone wrong. I have a text message service so that if it takes me out of, if it takes me over, that I know, um, so then I can go and check and I know something's come out that's not supposed to have come out or someone's charged me too much, like when Sky put your bill up 20 quid without telling you. And that does happen quite frequently. But we know exactly what's gone in that account and what's coming out of that account. And we know that once all the bills have been paid by a certain date, nothing else should come out of there. And any money that's left in that bills account goes straight into our family savings account. We then have our own separate accounts. Not because we like to keep secrets from each other, but there are times like, you know, when it's coming to birthdays or Christmas, I don't want Kevin to see what I'm spending because then he'll be like having a look that like I spent that, well that's a boys shop so have I bought him something from there, do you know what I mean? So I like to have my own little personal freedom and as well um, on Jordan Page's um, YouTube channel she talks about having like divide and conquer and I think that is so important so pretty much you have your own separate responsibilities so Kieran sorts out gas and electric, I pretty much sort out everything else because I'm like the finance person but he sorts that out so I don't have to think about that I don't have to deal with that so he goes and sorts that out um, I pay for my own phone bill out of my own account he pays for his own phone bill out of his account just we could have put them on the bills account but we didn't really feel like it was necessary and then that way we can just keep on top of our own phone tariffs and we don't have to get each other involved or whatever then we have savings accounts so we have an emergency savings fund this is where we keep money in there just as a backup so if we're out of work or like for example i'm on maternity pay i'm making no money at the moment so i'm bringing nothing in so i put extra money whilst i was working i was putting extra money in that emergency fund so that i can live off that whilst i've been off and that has left me with the same amount of money each month to live off as i would have done if i was working so that emergency fund was there for that so it's something like that where you put in enough money so that if something happens with your work you can live for a few months whilst you're in between jobs because we've had that where it's stung us kieran um was medically discharged from the army he had a few problems getting jobs and we was left for about two months where his income was a bit all over the place and we had no savings, we had no backup. So we had to live off credit cards and, and it just was not ideal because you're paying interest. So we've learned from the sting of that. So we put money in there. So we've got that away. So an emergency savings fund, you know you're not touching that unless it's an emergency to fall back on. Then we have like, um, I've got the kids separate savings accounts for the future. So I put money in there. Like Kieran has a fund spending savings account. Hi, I have a fund spending savings account. So it's pretty much extra money I've got. So if I save money each week on my groceries, I'll put my money in there so that I know, oh, we want to go to Chester Zoo this week. All right, well, I've got money in my fund savings account. Let's go. I'm not taking it out of my weekly budget. It's coming out of my fund savings account. And then we also have a family savings account, which is like if things need doing on the house or 
Penelope needed or new dance attire or stuff like that. It just comes out of the family savings account. I've got a Christmas savings account. I put money in there each each month so that when it comes to November, December time, I've got that money there. I can go and pay for our lovely Christmas dinner and I can go and buy the kids lovely presents because the money's there. It's not going anywhere because I've been putting it away throughout the year from my extra monies. I think that you need to get organised to be able to pay debts and things like that off and to be able to get organised with your money so you know that you're, you're going to have a lot more money to save is to have like these extra savings account and I think it's a really good idea to do that and just think of it like a filing system for your money so you know where everything's at you know well that's my fun money and that's my family savings and that's my emergency savings it's not all in one big pot and you're like well how much did I have for that and how much did I have for that it's all there separated you know what's what you don't have to have it wrote down everywhere you just know and like I said it's free so go and do it live to your means but with leaving yourself with a means to live that was a really random phrase that I just came up with but what I mean by this is so say I'm just for easy maths you earn a thousand pound a month don't think of you earn a thousand pounds a month you earn say 700 pounds a month and that other three and that's what you live off you live off the 700 and the 300 that's left over you split that so if you've got pressing debt you pay it straight off your pressing debt get rid of that debt because it's costing you money or if you've not got the debt or you've not got urgent pressing debt you split that you split that money between savings your emergency savings put some in there your fund savings put some in there your family savings put some in there so you've always got money in savings and it's building up and building up and then you can look at it and you can be like wow we can go to Disney World we've got all that savings there because I've been putting that amount away each month I mean if you can't do that if you you know that's 700 I mean I'm not saying that that's what you earn but 700 pounds isn't enough for you to live on you think right well let's just adjust that amount but don't don't live off the whole of your monthly income you need to make sure that you're leaving yourself with enough to live comfortably if something happened with your work or to put away for the future to do stuff with your kids just make sure you're putting some away each month. But I would say about if you can try and live off 70% of your salary and the other 30% you can put on pressing debt or save up, then you are winning at life and that is going to make it so that you can do nice things with your family in the future and you can get to go on those nice family holidays. And I know it's hard because you get into this habit, you're earning that £1,000 a month, you're spending that £1,000 a month, but instead of what, you, what you're going to do now because you've got your bills down, you've got your budget down, you've got your groceries down. Well, actually, I was spending £1,000 a month, but and now I'm only spending £600 a month, so I've still got an extra £100 to play with, and I've just put £300 in my savings account. So it's just those living really frugal lifestyle is really good because it, it, it allows you to save money in that place and put it into that place, and then that way you're living how you want to live just by thinking about how you spend your money. So definitely, I would say, do not live to your means make sure that you think of your income as a lot less than what it actually is and then put that difference away in savings each month. What I might mean by this, this really depends how tight you want to go. Are you really, really struggling? Are you really, really got that debt to pay off? Um, or you really got that holiday you want to save for like me I really want to go to Disneyland in Paris I really really want to go to Disneyland in Paris it's going to cost me £2,000 I'm going to be really honest to stay in the cheapest Disney hotel to stay there to feed four of us for a week I think it was a week it was like five days um, it was cheaper for five days than four days but yeah then you got food and stuff on top of that so it's like really which one's going to work out cheaper so for us to go to Disneyland in March it's going to cost me around two grand maybe more I can't afford that at the moment that's two grand that's a lot of money I don't have that away I'm earning no money I'm on maternity leave so I've got to wait till I go back to work and get my payback in order but in the meantime I'm going to get inventive and get some savings put behind me I'm going to think of things what to do so this weekend for example I'm going to do a baby sale where I'm taking all of my things all of Penelope's old things all of Henry's stuff that he's now not using I'm taking to this baby sale any money I make from that baby sale is going in my Disneyland fund account so 
I can go to Disneyland. Then what I'm going to do is shelf cooking. If you've not heard of shelf cooking, basically what it is, is you live off what you have in your cupboards and your freezer, the stuff that you store away and you forget about and it goes off and you have to throw it away. Give yourself a day's notice and you think, right, I'm going to do shelf cooking this week. And then your budget goes from £100 to like £20 for that week. So that other £80 you can put away in savings. And all you do with your £20 then is you substitute the ingredients that you'll need to, to add to the things that you already have. You don't go and buy a new recipe, you just subsidise the things that you've already got. So you shouldn't be spending more than like £20 to £30 a week. And if you can do that for like, it depends how much you hoard, because we've been quite good lately, we've been using stuff up. But we try and not hoard that much. But if you hoard a bit in your freezers and your cupboards, you can really go to town on it. You can really, really make like get inventive and think of things and get some really good ingredients on the go and get some good recipes on the go. Just think about it. Do a spending freeze. Give yourself 24 hours notice to get in those urgent things. You think, right, I've done my grocery shop for the week and we've got everything in. We've got enough stuff to last us for seven days. We are doing a spending freeze. No spending whatsoever for seven days. And do you know what? We've done this a few times, so it's been like, right, I've done my list, I knew what I needed, we've got it all in, we don't need anything else, spending freeze. So I had like an extra £120 that week to spend, I think, in my budget. That all went in savings because we didn't spend a penny of that. You're not allowed, you run out of milk, you don't have milk. You run out of tea bags, you stop having your brew. But if you give yourself that notice, then you can make sure you have everything in and then you don't spend anything else at all. And it really makes you think about it. It really makes you think, actually, that would cost me that money. That would cost me that money. Just get inventive. eBay, Depop. Where can you list your things? Go around your house thinking like, what can, do I use this? Do I need to sell it? Put your stuff all in a big bag and go and take it to one of those places where they weigh your clothes in and get a fiver for it. It's a fiver, it's better than nothing. Put that in your savings account or in your pressing debt, anything. You can get so inventive with ways to save money, it is unreal. And I actually think it makes it more fun as well because it might seem like you're living a really tight lifestyle, but in fact, we find we have quite a lot of fun with it. So we'll do the shelf cooking and we'll come up with some right concoctions and it'll be, we'll make a date night out of it. We'll do a cooking night together and it'll be something off like ready steady cook where they turn up with like we've got a tomato and an apple what can you make with that but it it really is and we can have a laugh with it and we'll sit down and have a nice meal and because you're really thinking about it you're actually putting more effort into it and I find that it makes things like say a lot more fun you do a spending freeze so you have to like think of ways of what you can do to get through that spending freeze best thing I find is don't go out do not go out if you're on a spending freeze but what I like to do is things will think right well we've got nothing coming up We've got no events, we've got nothing for this. So what we'll do is, right, this week we're gonna have our Netflix binging session because we're on a spending freeze, we're not going out. So it's just things like that, or let's do a cooking night and we'll cook a meal and we'll sit down, we'll have a date night. We've already got our wine in, we'll have a glass of wine with our dinner and we'll sit and we'll talk, we'll talk about our day. We'll design a picture on the computer together. You know what I mean? You start to think of things to do as a family and it's a lot more fun and I find that it brings you a lot closer sometimes than just paying to go out, like just paying to go to the cinema. You're just sitting there watching a film, not speaking to each other. Yeah, it's nice, I'm a movie buff, I love going to the cinema, but you, it cost me £24 the other week to take me and Penelope to watch The Little Mermaid. Right, I had The Little Mermaid on DVD, I did not need to spend that £24. It was a treat, it was from my treat fund. But £24, that's a lot of money for the cinema. What me and Kieran do a lot of the time now is we'll buy popcorn, we'll get some chocolate treats in, we'll get a drink, and we'll just do a cinema night at home, like with the new films that come out. And it costs us probably a fiver, or like if we get a pizza or something, maybe £10, but that's for all of us. So it's just things like that. Just, just get a little bit creative, get a little bit inventive, and you can have a fun lifestyle and frugal living and pay off your debt and save up for those things that you want. So fingers crossed, I can be really good at saving and I can get myself to Disneyland in February, March. I'm determined to do it. But I think living this frugal lifestyle, so I have debts, I still have debts I need to pay off, but they're not pressing debts at the minute because it's just like a loan that's on a repayment thing. But I want to get that paid off quicker. I don't need to, but I want to. So I'm paying extra on there to get that done, whilst also having the fun and the freedom of doing fun things as a family. By living like this, I've been able to go from having no holidays whatsoever to having three holidays coming up in the next 12 months. So that's just by no extra income, 
just by looking at what where I'm spending my money, what I'm spending my money on, where is it going, being statement savvy, budgeting like a boss, spending smart, being a money saving queen at the shops, do you know what I mean, like being, being the bargain queen, it does work, it will help you, you will save money or you will make money and you will be able to do better things in your life that you want to do that you have been restricted to before and if you want me to do any other videos like go into more detail on certain aspects of this video I know it's quite lengthy I'm hoping it's not too long but if you want me to go into more details you want me to do further videos on like certain things you want to explain like I said I do work in finance I mean I'm not an expert but I can explain things I can help you out with things if you would like me to do more videos please let me know in the comments below and I really really hope you found this helpful I really enjoy doing this video if you can't tell I've got a little bit jazz handsy all the way through this is something I'm actually really good at so yeah get in touch like I said if you want more videos like this don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you found this helpful thank you for watching my video today and I hope you find that this helps you out don't forget to subscribe for more videos I try and post every Wednesday and Sunday usually family related things fashion motherhood finance now traveling yep yeah, so don't forget to subscribe and you can catch all of those videos and i will see you in the next one